Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your coach, Adrian Schneer, and I am so excited that you are here today to spend some time with us. Today we have on the podcast, Brittany Ofodile, who helps women level up their businesses, show up as their authentic selves, and align all of it to their driven purposes. She has two decades of experience in corporate America. She has built and led teams, coached and mentored others, and improved their performance, proficiency, and now she takes that same energy, drive, and passion to move her own clients forward. But that is not all, and we're going to get into it. So hey, Brittany. Hey, Adrian. How are you? I'm good. I am so excited to have you here today because we always have such amazing conversations, and we came up with this topic together, and we thought, you know what? Everybody needs to hear about this. Absolutely. And so let's begin by... Firstly, introducing what we're going to talk about today, which is personal branding. And personal branding matters to everybody, no matter who you are, whether you're a student, whether you're a young professional, where you're more, whether you're a more seasoned professional, personal branding is make or break. Yeah, it's it make is. or break. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. But first, we want to get to know you a little bit better. So tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to this place. Yeah. So again, my name is Brittany Otho Delay, and I am a business strategist and sales coach. I was in corporate America for two decades and I spent a lot of time coaching and leading great teams, executives, high level leadership, as well as even, you know, myself got some amazing training. And I recently became a mom and that took a twist and a turn to where my husband he got tapped on the shoulder to move. We moved from Texas to St. Louis. And from that, I stepped out and I became a stay-at-home mom, so to speak, because I'm also still a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And I am raising my beautiful toddler girl. But I also knew that there's still a lot of me that's left in the tank, if you will. And so this is where Brittany the Coach was born. And I'm so excited to be here. Amazing. Amazing. And so twists and turns, right? Twists and turns. We could never imagine where we can never imagine where we're going to end up and how we're going to get there. And I think that that's so important. You could have never told me in a million years that I would have been a stay at home mom. Never. That was never in the, in the dream and never on the vision board and (laughs) never in the goals, but here I am. And life just literally just lived it that way. And it's a beautiful thing and it's something to get used to for certain, right? But, and you know that there's a a, a deep part of you that's still there. So then you just kind of make things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Build community and you meet dope people like Adrian. (laughs) Likewise. And, but you're not just, you're not, you're not staying at home all the, like you are an entrepreneur. Yes. And you are building an empire. Yes. Empowering people. And so part of the work that you do is branding and personal branding. And so let's move into that because I think that this is something that is, that can be really taboo to talk about. We, people don't want to touch things like appearance. People don't want to touch things like character. People, you know, and the thing is, is that how we present ourselves is actually really important. A lot of my work with my clients is how we present ourselves on paper, but then also how we present ourselves in interviews and also how we present ourselves online because make no mistake, anybody who's reading your materials, whether it's applications, whether it's anything else, they're Googling. Oh, they're watching. They're Googling, they're YouTubing, they're typing your names into Instagram, into TikTok, into whatever it is to see how you present yourself to the world. Doesn't matter what age. No. Doesn't matter what age. And so- and it's yes. entire family that's in- incorporated as well too. Right, right. Yeah. People who you are attached to, people who you associate with, people who you are affiliated with, even just by being connected 
online, who, what accounts are you following? What accounts follow you? Who's finding your stuff interesting? What are the comments being left and how are you responding to them? So everything, everything counts. Everything counts. Yeah. So let's start. I know that you have a framework that you love to use. So let's start with your framework to st- kick off our conversation on personal branding. Absolutely. So the the most important thing to personal branding, we'll just kick it off with the three C's of personal branding. And the three C's of personal branding is communication, competency, and character. And communication, I, I, I feel like, is goes without saying it's again how do you show up right how do you how do you show up how do you address situations how do you how are you consistent in in your messaging what is it that you are constantly putting out there into the world what are you relating yourself to what are you affiliated with right and then when you talk through the competencies is whatever subject or industry that you're in, do you know your stuff? Do you know what you're talking about? Whether that be from your education or your experience, because they both come hand in hand, right? Education is amazing and it's definitely necessary. Knowledge is power and experience is the best teacher of it all, right? There's no, I I feel like there's no bigger teacher in the world than experience. So do you know exactly what you're talking about? And can people see you as that authoritative figure and whether in that industry or whatever topic that you were talking about? Character is the biggest one for me. This is where I sit often. Character is how you show up. It is not, it, it is not when you show up, it's how you show up. Are you reliable? Do you show up on time? When you show up, do you add value? Do you, are you able to work cohesively in a team environment? Can you be trusted if you are an individual contributor? What is it about your character that sticks out amongst your competition? Amazing. I have so much to say, as do you, on each of these three areas. And so we're going to get into them. I think a few things that you highlighted really, really nicely for each of them was the how, because it's not that you're showing up because you can show up. Now, I'm not just talking about on social media. I'm talking about in the workspace with your peers, with your colleagues, even with your family. Like, how are you showing up? How are you representing yourself? Because every single thing you do contributes to or takes away from your personal brand. And the thing is that When we're talking about personal branding, it's so much of it is how you think about yourself, your self-esteem. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Your self-esteem and your confidence will exude in what you do, right? Because it's going to be a lot of the way that you have your conversations or whatever it is that you put out. So if you're always talking from a negative perspective, that's going to show, right? And if you're always talking about from the cup half empty, it's going it's going to relay out into your message. Thus, exactly what you spoke about earlier, that's going to talk through who you are now attracting that's and nice. what your comments are, right? And here you are really in your in real life, I guess you could say, you're a super positive person, you're super optimistic, you're you're a go-getter, but that's not what you're talking through. You're talking through your low self-esteem or low confidence, and then therefore you're attracting those types of people, which is then now building a character of a low self-esteem individual that you are not trying to portray. So you have to be mindful of the way that you speak and the way that you see yourself. So those daily affirmations, Being around positive community is going to be what's paramount for you to be able to exude what you're looking to do. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? I This, I think, is sort of outside the scope of this conversation, but I just want to raise it as like a mini tangent anyway, which is that companies work, obviously, all the time on their branding, all the time. And I mean, that's like, that's their PR, like that's what they do. And that is their public face to the rest of the world. And in the space that we work in here, which is student advancement, 
there are big box companies who work and who market based on fear. And so they attract their clients based on the fear mindset, the scarcity mindset. And so we don't operate that way. We don't attract using fear or fear mongering, fears and scarcity based mindsets. We actually come out and say, listen, you can enjoy this process. You can get to know yourself. You can get into your schools, your dream schools in a way and into your dream jobs and your dream promotions and whatever else you want to do in your advancement journey. You can do all of that and enjoy it. Get to know yourself. Really work on your intentionality, your thoughtfulness, your mindfulness. So we come at it from a very different way. And so it works both ways. When you're attracting not only the amazing community that you want to work with, but also when you're attracting people around you as an individual that you end up really absorbing when you spend your time with them. Like you absorb the energy of anybody that you're interacting with, whether it's an individual or a company. And so I think that that is such an important, just like sliver of tangent. <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to, I want to, Slither, slither your tangent yeah. and say that what that does for you is that brings you powerhouses. It brings you powerhouses that are ready to get into the work. They're ready to pull up their sleeves yep. and they know that there's going to be a bumpy ride, but that's not the what the focus is. That's right. The focus is going to be that we can do this and we can enjoy it along the way. So then when you start to work with those individuals, they're not focusing on all the negative and then thus spending, we have an hour together, right? And so now we've spent 15, 20 minutes working on mindset shifts and perspectives versus working on, let's talk about what we need to do for these applications. Let's talk about what, you know, criteria requirements that we need to meet for whatever, right? Yeah. We've wasted that time. So that creating the audience that you want makes it where you need to talk through who you're looking to talk to, right? Like exude what you want. Exactly right. And we, and that's why we attract powerhouses. You're absolutely right. And this is why our success rate is unbelievably high. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the type of people, the types of people that we attract into our programs because of the way that we show up, which is number one, how are you showing up your communication? Are you consistent with your message? And it doesn't necessarily have to be at the company level. It's also very much at the individual level. I am very consistent personally in how I show up for clients, but also how I showed up as a student, how I showed up as an employee before I started running these companies, how I showed up, what I brought to the table. And in terms of communication, that it was always my writing and verbal communication or skills that I worked on until they were at a level that they were like near flawless. And that is so important because now when you're working with me, whether you're a client at my law firm or whether you're a client at Apply Yourself, you know that what you're getting is going to be structurally and grammatically perfect and yeah. that your interview skills are going to be like right up there with the perfection of the rest of your materials because I'm teaching you how to work through it. So communication verbally, communication written. And non-verbally. And that's absolutely right. Non-verbally are essential, essential for number one. Yeah, they are. Like if you, the message that you are putting out is what people are going to know you as. Thus, when talking about personal branding, it's what people say about you when you're not in the room. That's right. That's important. It's your reputation. It's what someone knows that they're going to get out of you when they have you in front of them. And most importantly, when you're thinking about interviews or when companies are looking to choose someone, they they pull from what they see. It's not always about like the actual work that was done. It's how they seen a person act out in the, the community, right? And they say, they, because they know that they can trust that person to come in and, and do what they're looking to do. So it's important for you to know and understand that your your verbal skills, your nonverbal skills, the way that you present yourself is, is 
essential, just like you said. Yeah. So let's dive into that appearance, the way that you present yourself. Okay. So we've talked about the verbal, we've talked about the nonverbal. And now let's, let's just talk for a second about appearance, because I think that so many people are afraid to touch this, not with a 10 foot pole, with like a hundred foot pole. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I think that it's really important to just like couch some of our conversation here because how you present yourself and you can still be you. Nobody is saying don't be you, but you have to present yourself in such a way that really showcases your respect for yourself Absolutely. in your role. I think that that is like co the core of the importance of appearance. What do you think? I think I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I feel I'm just, just going to be honest here. Yeah. I feel like people get it super twisted yeah. when they be yourself, right? Yes, you are yourself, but then there's a level of professional self and then there's a level of home self. That's right. Right. And when you are your professional self, there is a particular way that you want to make sure that you show up and that you're represented. Just like for today, I could show up laying on the couch in a hoodie, right? Because yeah. that, that's really me, okay? But that's not my professional self. And then that's not whom I want to present myself to Adrian and her audience by any means, right? Or even to be looked at in that manner that, yeah, well, yeah, Brittany's going to show up. She has great content, but whew, really concerned about what she's going to look like when she comes, right? right? So there is a level of, being professional and being able to be selected that no one has to worry about if you show up, God, what are they going to come in here looking like? Mm -hmm. Or that I got to have to be worried that, yes, I really want to choose Adrian for this role, but I need to call her and tell her, hey, listen, this is what we need to look like in dress. People don't have time for that. No, They want to pick the package that has it all, that there's things that I don't have to teach you that you just already know. Mm -hmm. So presenting yourself. And also too, it takes you away from particular stereotypes. We're just, again, we're just going to be honest here. One of my clients, she is in the beauty industry and she loves to show off her amazing body, right? And she needed to go to the bank to get a loan. And when she went to the bank to get a loan, dressed up as her hot girl self, she said that there was far more focus on what she was wearing and what she looked like and all those things than they were focused on the loan. And they actually, I don't even think they even got to the application. Mm. And I told her because they didn't take you seriously. They didn't take you seriously. Now, yes, we have a lot of outside influences saying, you know, hey, don't worry about what I'm wearing. That's not your problem. That's not this. That's not that. But guys, the truth of the matter, that's not the real world. If you're showing up in professional spaces, you yeah. need to be professional yourself because that's exactly how they're looking at you. And this young lady, she's beautiful. She is bright. She is all the things, but she definitely showed up in a space inappropriate to what she wanted to, what she wanted to accomplish. And thus she didn't get to accomplish that. So we reversed it. We, we talked about it. We talked through it and we turned it around 360, put her in a nice, you know, she didn't have to go suited and booted, but we put her in a nice outfit to where she can go and present herself. And she was able to get that loan application. Mm -hmm. So it is important for people to see you as the professional that you are and the representation of whatever their company is or whatever the industry is that, that you are coming in to be a part of. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's and thanks for the example. And it's it's so important that when you're presenting yourself to the world, whatever that means, that you're showing up in a way that is authentic to you, but that is also appropriate. And this also translates to online spaces. And I think we'll get there in a second, but I want to sort of t take things back to like when I was a student, when I was, you know, a young professional, when I was working on my own advancement before I really even knew what that meant, right? 
because yeah. these new words that I'm using now are certainly not words and, you know, things that I'd used to describe myself way back when, but they certainly are now, you know, cause now I've got it figured out. So, the, you know, when I was in, you know, when I was a student, when I was in grad school, going to conferences, when I was in law school, I mean, it's really important. You don't like show up in a suit and tie every day or a blazer and whatever every day, but you show up in a way that feels comfortable and authentic to you. And there are people that show up in all kinds of different ways, all kinds of different ways. And certainly when you're showing up as yourself, you want to be showing up as somebody who other people are comfortable associating with. Now, I'm not talking about don't, you know, don't do something that's going to make someone uncomfortable. That's not what I'm talking about, because I don't think that the external validation is a piece that we're talking about here. We're not looking for external validation here from other people. What we're looking for is for you to get yourself ready and be able to look in the mirror and say, I am comfortable with this. This is who I am. This is who I want to become. And I am showing up for myself in a way that is going to get me there. It's it's also strategic, which I think is also really important. It's not just that we're not like throwing on a hoodie and, you know, like you're having this podcast conversation from the couch, which maybe would be more comfortable. <laughs> for both of us, yeah. honestly, if we're like, being honest, yeah, yeah that would be we, great. <laughs> we all have our home selves. We have our private lives and we have our professional lives. And those two for me, are not separate. They're not right. separate, but you show up differently. I show up differently for my family than I do at work. It's the same character, which we're going to get to. Same, I'm bringing the same character, the same values, the same principles, sometimes to a fault, <laughs> I think, for me. But I'm showing up in a way that is authentic to me. And I think that that is the most important takeaway for appearance is is this authentic? Are you showing that you have respect for yourself? Because how you present yourself, just like it, it's, it's exactly the same as the way you present yourself on paper, the way you present yourself on paper and the way you present yourself physically shows what you think about yourself, how you think about yourself, the mindset that you bring to the table about yourself. Yeah. And I'd like to also add when you are going for these schools or these companies or whatever it is that you're going after, make sure that it is aligned with your driven purpose. It That's is right. aligned with whom you are. Yeah. Because then in that space, you won't have a problem with showing up with in the way that the company or whomever is asking you to show up. In my previous role in corporate America, we had to be in, in suit and tie ladies suit and dress shirt. And there would be many individuals that would come in and they would be super frustrated and not, why do we have to wear a suit? And in Texas, it was hot. It was hot. Yeah. We have to wear a suit, you know, and they would be super frustrated with that. Well, that is what the company is asking for. That is what is aligned with their driven purpose. So if you want to work with this company, then these are the needs that you need to meet. Right. Mm -hmm. And if that is not something that you want to do, then you need to look into that as well. That way that you can still be your your authentic self. I was still able to be my authentic self. I wore my bright colors. Mm -hmm. I wore my fun shoes, but I was in alignment with what that company asked me to do. And that's important as well. And a lot of times I feel like sometimes we step out of character in the sense that we are trying to push a buck towards this big company that has been running for X, Y, Z amount of time. And they have been, they know what they want. We as individuals don't always get to have that right. And that's something that's really harsh to say. It's really, I guess, quote unquote, controversial to say, but you don't always get to change what that looks like. You can speak your voice in, in an appropriate manner, but at the end of the day, if this is what they're calling for, then you need to make sure that this is something that you want to do. And if it's not, then that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. There's a billion trillion companies in this world. Go look elsewhere. Yeah, because it's because what you're doing also when you're working for another company, entity, whatever it is, is it's someone else's vision. Yeah. 
It's someone yeah. else's vision. So for example, when I'm bringing on team members here at Apply Yourself and at my law firm, there there is an element of alignment that needs to happen. Yes. And it's certainly about values. That goes to character. It's certainly about how we present ourselves. And it's certainly about how that person, whoever they are, can really absorb our mission and our values and mm-hmm. how they can exude that because all of the roles here are forward facing. Yeah. I'll yeah. give you an example. I had a I had a call with someone who we were considering bringing on to the team and they they were presenting us with a package that we were that we were considering and they showed up in and you know we're in our offices, you know our COO joins us and so we're like we're on, we're here. And they're in like this dark basement in this sort of like zip up that with like a mess behind them. (laughs) And they were asking for this multiple four figure American monthly spend. And we're in Toronto. So, you know, add like 30% to whatever the Toronto prices are, <laughs> the Canadian prices are. And they're showing up like that, asking me for a significant investment per month to work with them. And it was a hard, hard pass because you can talk all the game you want. But if that's how you're showing up, not to any meeting, to our first meeting, there's something else happening here. But in, and not only that, if that's how you're showing up for me, yeah. how are you going to show up for my clients when I'm not there and I'm not present and you're, you're that individual contributor and I'm trusting you to be aligned with what we're doing? That's There's, right. It's just not, it's not going to happen. And again, in that sense, if that is the individual that you are and if that's how you choose to carry yourself, that is 100% fine in that space, do not apply for companies that are not looking for that. That is just the real deal, Holyfield. A lot of people really want to push the buck of, you know, keeping it real and being authentic. There is just truth to a level of professionalism and clean and alignment and asserting yourself in a certain manner than what that individual presented. And that's not going to work for your company. That's not who there's look at your background. And then I can see the <laughs> dungeon background. That's not how this works. And, yeah. and it's just as simple as that. I would see a lot of people, even in the corporate space, because corporate America, they ask a lot of, they ask a lot out of you from a presentation space, especially the higher up you go, the higher up you go, there's, there's a, you know, a thing called executive presence. You have to be able to sit in a chair and have authority figure. You cannot sit in a chair, slouch back or, you know, clothes dirty, whatever. You know, you've got to present yourself in a manner in which if I had to pull you right now, we would always say this. If one of our executives would come in the building right now and say, hey, I got to interview three people right now today for XYZ position that is offering XYZ package would you be ready or would you say, oh, wait, hold on. Let me go to the bathroom or I got to run home really quick. Mm-hmm. Always be ready for that next opportunity. You're right. Always be prepared for that next opportunity, even when it's not present in the moment. I love that. I love that. And as you're, as you're explaining this, I'm realizing this is exactly how I show up and how I've showed up every single day, yeah. every single day, no matter what. And I'm thinking yeah. all the way back to like, the beginning of university. That's like, I have shown up like that every single step of the way. And so I, I love the way you explained that because it's so, it's so relatable. Yeah. What, what I'm also realizing in our conversation right now is we are really conquering both worlds. Yes. I am conquering from the corporate America perspective and you are conquering from the education perspective, from the, the time that you stepped into university and how it propelled you. So this shows how it is important in both spaces. Yeah. And it's the same. It is. It's how you present yourself. Yep. It's the same principles working in parallel 
across two different industries, yeah. the yeah. academia and the, the, the corporate world. And many of our clients here, especially my, many of my one-on-one -on -one clients who I've been working with for years are young professionals who are either in public service jobs in government or in corporate Canada, I guess. <laughs> it's not really a oh, term, yeah. corporate Canada, <laughs> but who are excelling in that way. And it's the same principles, the same strategies over and over and over and over again. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It is. And it's a, it's so important to, and I'm glad that we're having the conversation because just like you said, a lot of people, they don't want to touch on it. And I think they don't want to touch on it because people, I kind of hear the arguments in the background, you know, yeah. to be honest, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to wear that. I don't have to wear that. And this is who I am. This, and you're a hundred percent right. That is yep. something that I feel like we need to make sure that that message is cascaded across mm -hmm. the board. Yep. You're right, but you may not be right for me. You may not be right for this company, or you may not be right for that school or for that application or whatever. Keep that in mind because it's important for you to show up and what aligns with their driven purpose. And also it speaks, it does, just like you said, Adrian, it speaks highly to what you think about yourself. So even if today, if I showed up in a hoodie and on the couch, do I really think of myself as an authoritative figure, as an expert in what I'm talking about? And as somebody who somebody should listen to, should you listen to me? And I'm chilling on the couch. This is, you know, Adrian's platform. This is not a late night live that I'm doing from home. <laughs> where I may be chilling on the couch and be like, hey guys, I got something to say. And make no mistake, like Brittany and I have had very, like we have shown up on the couch for each other. <laughs> we have shown up on the couch for each other. And we'll continue after this we'll message. Continue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but for professional purposes, there is, there's a different, you ha it, it's, you're elevated. Yeah. We're and elevated. elevate yourself. And, and right. then elevate yourself where you want to go. Yeah. Not where you currently are. Right. There's been there's been so many people <laughs> I laugh about, okay, coming to America. You know, first I was on fries, then I was on lettuce. <laughs> and then you, you propelled yourself. Yay, this is now the king of the country. Like, you don't know where you're going, but you know that you have the passion and drive to be going somewhere. Dress like it, act okay. like it, show up like it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, I think that is such... Such good advice for anybody, no matter where they are in their journey. Yeah. I think that's great. Absolutely. So the second C is, is a competency and competency is, okay, so you've shown, you're, you've shown up now, what are you going to do about it uh, and how? 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this can be inter by means of education. It can be by means of experience, but like, let's be honest, you can have all the education in the world and not have a clue what to do with it, not have a clue how to apply it. This is why you have amazing practitioners and you have practitioners who end up getting sued a lot. <laughs> and we see this on the legal side of things. At my law firm, we, we help to mitigate any circumstances for anybody who may find themselves in difficulty. And we also help practitioners build their businesses in ways that they're not getting into any sort of hot water. But what I think is really important is that, and I, you know, and I'm speaking from a place of, I have the letters behind my name mm -hmm. and then there's the experience. Like you can, yeah. like I went to law school, my first day in a law firm, do you think I knew anything that they were like, I didn't, not a clue, not a clue. How do you get to the level where you feel comfortable and competent doing what it is that you're required to do? Practice, showing up, watching, absorbing, shadowing, extra time on everything to make sure that you are delivering. It's not just about the education. It's also about what you do with it, the experiences that you seek out in order to take you to the next level and then the next level and then the next level. What do you think? I ag <laughs> agreed. I want to add community as well. Yes. Because what that does is it puts you around individuals who have done it, what? who will do it, who are pursuing it. I've always said, you know, there are three mentors that you always need in your life. You always need someone who is older, someone who is younger, and someone who is the same age. 
The older one has the wisdom. They've been there, done that. The 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 one that is the same age, you guys can vent and, and hoot and holler with each other about it. And then the one who is younger is the one who keeps the fuel to the fire, right? And with and competencies, while you know and understand what you're doing, are you relaying that out into the world that is going to bring value and impact by number one, what's happening in the world? So that's why I always keep a young, I keep a 20 year old around me at all times, right? <laughs> Because they are where the future is going and I am not prepared for that. I am not used to that. And in our corporate America world in banking, we used to always have the ATM machines, right? And the elderly individuals never wanted to use them for anything. They always wanted to get into the line to withdraw the simple $20. Then we would have to go and show them. So while they knew and understood how to use it, They didn't care to use it because it wasn't, you know, in their way. So keep people around you that will help you bring fuel to your fire and elevate you to your next level. So while, yes, you have the education and the understanding, how do you put it to work? And I want to bring a parallel in that it's, in my experience, it's often not been about age. It's been about willingness. Well, it's been about honestly, and we're getting here, it's been about character and the, the drive to learn and, Mm -hmm. and become better at whatever it is that you're doing. So I would, the parallel that I would draw here is beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yes. Something like that, where you're surrounded in a community. Like for example, in our community at, in apply yourself in our community, we have people who are freshly applying to their schools. We have people who have been through the program and we have people who have gotten in and now they're working on their next stages. And they come in all different ages and stages and the advice and the support that they bring to our sessions is so wonderful because they're coming from different stages of experience regardless of age. And that's what I love so much about the world of like academia and applications and advancement in general, even in the professional world, is that you can be any age doing anything. I mean, there were people in my law school class, for example, who were, you know, I was at the time, you know, some somewhere around 27, 28, depending on, you know, the year. But then we had people who were like 45, 55, 65. And they had this like wealth of knowledge from their previous careers that then they decided, okay, that's no longer for me. I'm transitioning into law, which is so interesting. And as students, I remember, you know, when I was a younger student, perhaps when I was in my master's and and there was a, a, a man who was doing his master's in my class with me. And he was about, you know, like 67. He had been a dentist for, you know, 40 years and he decided, okay, I'm going back. I want to do a master's. And so he was in my class and at the beginning, you, you sort of revert back to the sort of like competition mindset, which Mm -hmm. is like, oh my God, they, they know more than I do. They must know, you know, exactly what they need to do when really they're bringing such a wealth of experience that if you just sit back and listen to what they have to say and what they have to bring to the conversation. And it was the same in law school. And when I was in law school, I was also considered to be one of the older ones because most people were like 22, 23, that they, what what really we start focusing on is that competence piece. Like what are you, how do you bring this to the table? What are you going to do with it? How are you, how are you applying this information? Because somebody might think of this you know, lawsuit in this way, but somebody else thinks of it in that way because of all their experience. And so I just, I think it's the, the parallel is so great to raise when it comes to like different levels of that experience and that wisdom that they bring to a conversation. What do you think? It's keeping your, it's keeping your mind open. Yeah. Because that is going to be the biggest thing. You always need to be learning. You always need to be willing to be coached. You always need to be willing to hear a different perspective Mm -hmm. in order to grow. 
So you, as an individual, you have a bubble and you have grown and learned in your different stages. If you stay in that, you're not going to be able to elevate. But if you keep people around you who are, who have been there, who are there or who are going there, you will get such a different perspective and it's only going to elevate you. I, right. I believe that's exactly how Facebook was born. Honestly, <laughs> Facebook was born and how it changed the world. Really, the, you know, there's a, there was a team of guys who had an idea. And then here comes the old, old Zuckerberg who just completely changed the game based off of what he had seen them doing and how he could change it. Right. And so it's like broadening your perspective and seeing what other individuals are doing and just being able to elevate your own skill set. Always be willing. Always be willing. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And I think that it's so important that we also sort of touch on the fact that it's it's so important to not be afraid of learning new skills because so many people are like, okay, well, this is just like so technical. That's, that's I'm going to hire somebody to do that. Or, you know, I'm going to pass this off to somebody else. And I think that while you, while that may be the direction that you're going, if you're building a team, you have to learn how to do that nitty gritty stuff first in order to be able to teach somebody how to do it. And this applies not just with, you know, technical things. It also applies, for example, in, in, in uh, building my law firm right? I have, you know, put in the time, my partner has put in the time that we need in order to know exactly all of the minutia that we need to train a younger or less experienced associate in. And now we're bringing on people on our team. We have a new family lawyer. We have our new assistant and we are, and, and specifically when we're, when we bring on those members of our team, you have to know how everything works. You have to know how everything works because you have to know then when they're doing something, you have to understand what's working and what's not working. And you have to understand why. Yeah. And um, that speaks back to competence also. Major. And that, that's even in, in the, in the entrepreneur space, that's major mm -hmm. in the entrepreneur space. And even in the corporate space, if you don't know how to walk the walk, you don't know how to inspect what you expect. You don't know how to make sure that just like you're saying, you're building a team. You, If you don't know how to do something, you don't know how to inspect what Susie, you know, homemaker is doing. You have no idea to make sure that she's doing the right things. And a lot of times, guys, that's how communities or excuse me, not communities, companies get taken down. Mm -hmm. You don't, you hear it over and over, especially when I was in corporate, I would hear it over and over. Oh, I trust but, you know, Betty with my life, she's been doing my accounting for 25 years and you have no idea that she's skimming off the top and, <laughs> and then, you know, and, and retiring. I think there was a story about a person who was at the IRS for a long time. And I think for like uh, 20 years or something, this person was taking one cent off of every file that they were dealing with. And it came out with a couple of million dollars and they had finally found it out. But it was, again, people not inspecting what this individual was doing. A lot of times people you trust, you put your trust into something and you think that, oh, they're not going to do this. They're not going to hurt. And that's exactly where you came in, especially with me for like, I was, I had the thought of, oh, I'm just going to get templates for my policies and procedures and my terms and conditions. And Adrian was like, absolutely, you're not. That's not what I do. Right. And I wouldn't have known that, number one, if I wasn't willing to grow and to listen. And number two, if I wasn't able to learn how to do it for myself. So it helps you to grow your company and exactly just simply who you are. And it it keeps you on the up and up. That's important. I think we can just say that in just basic layman terms. It, it really keeps you on the up and up because if you don't know what you're doing, people can hurt you and time to take it down, to be honest. So yeah, know what you need to know within your business. Always be able to grow. Always be able to be willing and learn and and be coached. Have community around you so that you can gain experiences and knowledge from others that, again, who have been there, are there, are not going there. That's right. That's right. I love it. And on that note, Brittany and I are part of the same entrepreneur community. That's how we met. Yes. That's yes. how we met. And so we are but we've both sought out exactly the things that we're talking about here 
And so we're not coming, you know, to this conversation from some like ivory tower. We are coming here with like the practical, this is what you need. This is what has allowed us to level up. Meeting people like each other, meeting people in that extended community that where where everybody's there to help everyone else level up. Thank you, bro. And that is so important. The, the aspect of community is so important, especially when you're building your, your competence. Yeah. And it, it's, it's necessary. You, you have to make sure in order for you to be the person that everybody else wants to listen to, you have to be able to listen to other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have to be, you know, your stuff because you gained the knowledge, but then you also gain the knowledge through going through experience and you were listening to other people. Now you're able to share that knowledge through the education that you have and the experiences. And that is what's going to make you the pillar of that industry, that community, that topic and pe- make people want to listen to you. Yeah, that, it's it's honestly it's that you Again, I just, I will keep going back to you always have to be willing and to be opening. And just like you said, how we met, if I didn't carry myself in a particular manner in that group or I didn't show up, you wouldn't invite me or have me on or it's same for you. If you didn't show up or be, I wouldn't want to be a part of your audience, but like, this is what we know. We, we great people through great communities and we're definitely like-minded individuals. So we're able to grow together. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I think that that is a perfect segue into character. Character. Now, for those of you who are only listening to audio, who are not seeing the video, Brittany just got real excited. (laughs) Character is everything, man. Everything. Character, character, I uh, don't, you know, communication and competencies are extremely important. But character is what drives the boat. Character is what allows people to see who you are from an integrity space, mm. from a authentic space, from a willing space. Are you, do you work together in teams? Like all of those things to be able to trust you with my baby, whatever it is that I am growing and birthing. If I can trust you through and through your character, that propels you far. And the truth yeah. of the matter is, care. I believe, again, may be a bit controversial, but I believe your character can propel you further than your education and a lot of your experience. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people will want to work with you based on just your character. Oh, get- that's true. 100%. Oh, 100%. We, the number of times, and this is just like a teeny example, the number of times that clients switch to my law firm is because they didn't like the people they worked with before. It had nothing to do with their skill. Their credentials, nothing. Nothing. It had nothing to do with their education, had nothing to do with their skill, had nothing to do with any of that. It was, I cannot stand to be on another call with them. (laughs) And another time it was, that was one. Another time it was that they, that the other firm talked to me using legal jargon and they wouldn't, they, they could not explain things to me in a way that I would understand. In the way, right. Just to be me as a person. And yep. it, it, I, I, I can give an example. When I started on my venture as an entrepreneur and I was looking for a coach, I got on the phone with a, 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 a coach and I was five, three minutes late. And I had no business taking an 8 a.m. call because I was my I, my daughter was six months old. Everybody in the house was crazy. There was no business, but I did. I was three minutes late. I saw that I woke up in a panic. Bottom line, I text her. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Can we jump on the call? Finally jumped on the call at 8, 11 a.m. And I bring these time frames up for a purpose. Uh-huh. I break up on the call. And we're, we're talking and the entire time she, she has an attitude, she's frustrated. She's kind of exerting her authority upon me. Like, I don't normally do this. I don't deal with people, but it seems like you're willing to work. So let's do this. Very, very harsh, very rude. And at that time, that individual was asking me for a 12 week program. And I want to say it was about $2,000, right? 
I was, again, talking about self-esteem and what you exude, right? I was overwhelmed because I just had a baby, all of those things. I got off the phone with her and I genuinely thought, okay, well, I know she's a little hard, but it may be what I need. I'm going to go with it. Then I got on an, a, a call with another community and a, another community coach. I was actually late again, frazzled or dazzled. The coach said to me, hey, you know what? It's okay. Let's just reschedule. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Bottom line, got on the coach, got on the call with that other coach. She was super calm, super understanding, super loving. I paid double yeah. what I was going to pay with that other coach mm -hmm. because that individual was kind, that individual was patient, and that individual was understanding and what I needed in that moment. Yeah. To, and it spoke to me and it was relatable to me. I paid double. So your character and how you treat people and how you present yourself matters. Oh, I love that story. And it is so true. It's so true. And so I find so many parallels in like the law firm work and in the apply yourself work that we do, because especially for, for example, apply yourself we have students and applicants who are coming who have just had, for example, a call with one of those big box companies who are pushing the numbers, pushing the stats and all this. And then they come to me and they realize, hmm, this is somebody who's actually been on admissions committees, job search promotion tenure committees. This is somebody who actually has worked with the numbers. And they're telling me, okay, yeah, we have to look at the numbers, but that's not all that matters. And so we come here from a non-numbers-based perspective. We know they exist. We work with them. We get it. We strategize around it. But that's not all there is. There's the written materials. There's how you show up in interviews, if applicable. There's so many other things. And what is so important is that the character, not only of yourself as an individual, but also of the companies that you're looking to work with. I mean, really take a look at who they are and what perspective they're taking and are they really competent in what they are offering or are you pursuing those opportunities out of insecurity, out of fear, out of imposter syndrome? Oh boy. What do you think? Oh my gosh, man, there's so much to, to, to peel back here with this onion, especially when it comes to imposter syndrome. You know, there's social media is saturated with online coaches and individuals who, you know, want to help you. And there's a lot of times people, they want, you want to be in their community because they have an amount of followers or what looks like possibilities. But a lot of times they're literally just faking it until they make it, right? And then when you go on a call with them, they're a completely different person that you were introduced to online. And imposter syndrome, I feel, is something that came out of the pandemic. And again, I'm just going to speak very blatant. I think it's whack. I think it it's just, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of because imposter syndrome, we were in a pandemic and that's where you heard of it the most, right? You're at home. You have, you cannot go anywhere. You can't do anything. You have all these ambitions and goals, but the truth of the matter is, is there is a global pandemic going on and you couldn't escape anywhere. You couldn't get on a plane. There's nothing you could do but sit on the, the, the Instagram and stare at people all day. So then, yes, you do wonder, oh, well, how are they getting that success? And how are they? And oh, no, there, it's the, in the whole entire environment that encompassed that emotion or that brought upon that emotion. And that it's not fair to say that, oh, I just want to be like Adrian so bad. I can't breathe. That's not the case. I admire what you're doing. I'm inspired by what you're doing and I can do it too. I just got to go and figure out what I'm doing. So look at people from an inspirational perspective. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of mentors that I have that are mentors in my mind. Never met them. Don't know anything For sure. about that. But they mentor me because I watch how they carry themselves and what they do, what character they exude on the right. and in person. Mm -hmm. But that's not, and I don't want to be them. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be Brittany. So this imposter syndrome to me is it's whack. It's frustrating to hear, and I feel like a lot of times people love a good label. 
Mm-hmm. It's like a prescription. They love a good label and they run with it. And when really you're just looking for inspiration and mentorship and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually recorded a podcast episode on imposter syndrome because when you just said, I want to be Brittany, I want to be my version of the, of the inspiration that I'm finding. A lot of people aren't yet at the point where they are saying, I want to be Brittany. They're saying, I want to be them. I want to be there. And so, especially students, especially, why can't I be like that? Why can't I get the grades like that? Why can't I understand what they're understanding? Why can't I perform like that? And so many people are not yet at the place where they can say, I want to be me in this. I, I want to be me elevated. I want to be the inspiration that I'm finding off that, that is off in, in a way that is authentic to me. And so the way that I approach imposter syndrome is that firstly, the fact that it's called a syndrome bothers me because I think it's total BS that like we have to attach some sort of like diagnosis to anything in order for it to like be a label to, 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 you know, throw around. And second, that once we get past my annoyance with that, (laughs) with the label, I want, I, I really begin to sort of unpack what imposter syndrome feels like, what it is. And what we're really getting at is a level of discomfort in a period of really important and intense growth. Because right before you are like primed and ready for that growth, right? Like right before that moment, you're uncomfortable. And even through the growth, you're uncomfortable. But realizing that discomfort and actually using it to your advantage is what is going to propel you forward. And it's not about fake it till you make it. And so let's talk about the difference between fake it till you make it and and this and why fake it till you make it is also BS. <laughs> I, I think it's for, for me, it's simple. You fake it till you make it. That's great. And I am a sales coach. And when you fake it till you make it, you have all these great funnels and marketing and all this, all this dancing and all that great stuff. And then when you get on a call with someone, you're not that same person at all. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're a complete stoic person or whatever. Now, this audience that you have attracted, they don't want to work with you because you have faked it until you made it. You made these people now come into your orbit and now they don't even know who they're dealing with. And fake it until you make it only last for so long. You can only be that person for so long, kind of like the analogy many use when you're dating. I met their assistant. I met their, I met their imposter because you can only be a certain way that is not authentically you for a certain amount of time frame, And then ultimately you are going to pop into exactly who you are. And unfortunately, because you have invited so many that are not aligned with you, it's not going to fit right. Right. So now you're in this air or this space attracted around individuals who are not aligned with whom you are. And it's probably people that you really don't even want to work with either. And now you've got to fake it till you make it because you brought it all in. And then I think that is where some of the labels of like the anxiety and the depression, that's where all that comes from. And that's where it all, it comes from, it comes in your orbit because now you have created this entire persona that is not genuinely who you are, but you've got to perform now. Right. You, you, you got to perform now because they're here. So what are you going to do? Right. right. So don't, you know, being whom you are and finding what is aligned. There is a billion, million people, trillion companies in this world that you can work for. And even an entrepreneur as yourself, there is somebody for everybody. There is an audience for everything. Be your authentic self. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently was approached to speak on a podcast for introverts. And I thought Mm. that was very interesting because I am all but an introvert. But I understood where she was coming from. And it was bringing someone outside of her community 
in to kind of pop the bubble versus me going in pretending I'm an introvert. Of course. I'm not an introvert, right? And so, but the point is, is that someone who is not of me still was attracted to what I do and I and found a way that I can be in their orbit and I can help them. Right. So it doesn't simply be you. This fake it till you make it is it's whack and it's not, it, it doesn't last. No, it doesn't. And it speaks also to, again, how you think about yourself, how you think about yourself, how you perceive yourself and how you portray yourself to the world. You don't have to, and you shouldn't, feel like you're being fake ever, ever. But there's always an element of growth though. Like you might feel uncomfortable doing something because you don't, you're developing the skill set. You're figuring out the next best step. You're figuring out the strategy. Those can all be really uncomfortable, but you can be you authentically as you're going through that process. It's not about showing up and being somebody else. And, and you you mentioned earlier about, you mentioned a few things. You talked about how maybe someone will say, well, how come I can't think like her? Or how come I can't see this? Well, again, one, you don't know what their story is. That's right. For them to get to whom and whatever, where where they are. And same, just like yourself. Yeah. Where does your story? And, and a lot of, think about it, even just in, in individuals, we always want something the other person doesn't have. Like, oh, I want curly hair or no. And the person with curly hair is like, no, oh my God, I really want straight hair. <laughs> what I mean? But somebody is always looking for what everybody has. And so that's why it, it speaks to you being simply who you are because you work in that body, right? The body works. When I mean the body, the general people, like we all, we're better when we're connected, but we need whom you are to be better connected. Don't be who everybody else is because we already got enough of them. We need exactly the spice and ingredients that you have to make this thing work. So showing up as somebody else is never going to help you be driven to what exactly it is that you want to be. Also, there you mentioned how when you're in the class and you're looking at like, again, other people and you want to be you know, just who and what they are. Bottom line, just remember, it doesn't work. You have to be simply just who you are. And that is what's going to bring you out even better. And then when you're in uncomfortable, that's the best place to be because that's where your ministry really comes from. That's where your juices really start to flow because you're going to like fight or flight. You're going to figure out how to make this work. So it's okay to be in that uncomfortable space because that's where you're going to grow. You're going to grow into you. A oh, I love that. And that have met yet. And that's great. I love that. I think that that is a perfect place to close our conversation. So Brittany, I want to thank you so much for being here today. This is not the end. And I think that we had some really valuable conversation today, really valuable lessons learned. And thank you for, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Any time. And thank you for listening, and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.